Good morning, good afternoon, good day to everybody joining us on this webinar. Good to have you with us. My name is Hazim Al Turk. I'm a cloud security systems engineer here at Cisco, covering our cloud security portfolio. Um, so today we're going to be speaking about StealthWatch Cloud, which is our advanced security analytics tool and threat detection mechanism. Just a word for the portfolio. So we cover three main products in cloud security. The first is Cisco Umbrella, which is the industry's leading secure internet gateway. The second is CloudLock, which is our CASB solution. And the third is StealthWatch Cloud, which is what we're going to speak, be speaking about today. Also on the call with me are my two expert colleagues, John and Fernando, who are going to be answering any questions that you might have. So feel free to ask any questions throughout the session. So by way of an agenda, I'm going to start by speaking a bit about the background of the industry and why this topic is so relevant and important. Then I'll be speaking about StealthWatch Cloud itself as a solution and why you know, it matters to you as an organization and you know, what benefits it gives to you. And then I'll be showing you a brief demo of the product itself so that you get a look and feel of how it works. So great to have you and I'll get started right away. So if we think about cloud security, traditionally the way you know, customers have thought about it is that it's mostly that large customers are being attacked, right? If I take some statistics from the US side of the market, it's actually quite a different story. In 2016, the average cost per breach in the United States was $7 million. This is a staggering amount if we think about it. Things like remediation costs, things like um, you know, losing customers, etc., all account to this figure. So this should be top of mind for all your customers or users that are you know, embracing the cloud. If I look at small to medium businesses with under 1,000 employees, in that similar year, 55% of them were subjected to cyber attacks. Right, and that's also quite a, a big, big amount. Over half of these guys also didn't make any changes in the following year to their cybersecurity infrastructure. And we're going to take a look at just why this might be, right? Because the, you know, if you're going to be attacked, then logically you want to have a system in place to protect your organisation. But there are some challenges which we hear time and time again from users. When it comes to the regulatory and compliance constraints. 30% of SMBs see this as a high security risk as well. So the point that we want to address and start off is that security needs to be top of mind for all customers, right? And what we're going to address today is maybe start off with some challenges and then speak about a solution that could provide you um, a way out of this. So the big challenge that I face in a lot of users is firstly, you have a lot of upfront capital investment required in order to have a solution in place. So this is the CapEx, right, the OPEX of putting together a solution. Once you invest in that solution, you need the right resources and personnel to actually run that solution. And it's no secret to all of us in the cybersecurity space that talent is quite short. You know, it's hard to recruit the right people to run our systems and to keep them, keep them going and to also have the training necessary to utilize the solutions correctly. Um, then you have the issue of complexity. Adding a new solution in your security stack or network stack, you need to be thinking about does it integrate well with the rest of the stack, how does it work, um, and this could be a challenge for, for some users. Extended deployment time, so security solutions vary in how long they take to be deployed. It could be anything from a matter of days to weeks, we've heard about months and even longer than that. So this is something which is stopping um, you know, some investment from taking place and also the ongoing management costs. Running, running the solution and making sure it reaches full potential. Now these issues are compounded when we start talking about the cloud because the cloud is no longer an individual responsibility whereby you control the hardware and you control all the systems in place and you have you know, direct access or you know, they live on your premise. Now it's more of a shared responsibility model whereby the cloud provider has some responsibilities in securing the infrastructure of the cloud, but then you as the end user have responsibilities for securing what's inside the cloud. So if we look at the cloud provider side, so typically these are your AWS's, your Microsoft Azure's, your Google Cloud Platform. These guys, their responsibility lies in making sure the hardware, the software, the networking, 
equipment, uh, high availability is all well and good. But then when it comes to what's actually in the cloud, so the customer data, um, your applications, um, there needs to be some questions that need to be addressed there. So things like how are you protecting your data in the cloud? Are your applications secure? Have you configured your firewall? Is your identity and access management configuration done correctly? Do third party users have access to your data, right? And you are responsible for all of this ultimately, right? This is, and this is, this is important that we're addressing this because a lot of traditional security minds, um, you know, that are, you know, slowly begin to adopt the cloud from the networking side, don't typically, you know, recognize that it's a shared responsibility model and there is a big onus on the customer or the user themselves to be able to address their security uh, aspects of the cloud. So the cloud actually requires a completely different set of security tools to ensure the same level of security as your on-prem. If I give an example, if their user creates a new security group that accidentally allows external IPs to access a resource, then on-prem, this is traditionally taken care of by a firewall at the edge. But then when it comes to the cloud, it's a more dynamic landscape. So the first step to address this is by having visibility. You can't protect what you can't see. And if you think about cloud computing as a concept in and of itself, that's essentially having your data in someone else's computer. So you need that visibility as the first step so that you understand exactly what every entity is or every host on your environment, understand how it's talking to other entities and hosts on the environment as well, then begin to build some baselines of normal behavior. So is this endpoint speaking in a way that is normal to how it normally behaves? And if it's not, and if there are changes, then alerting on changes that allude to a security risk or a potential compromise. And this is important because you don't want to be alerted on changes that might be trivial or not really related to a security concern, but you want to have meaningful alerts to understand is there a concern, is there a, 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 a level of risk to my organization, and then based on that, to have the ability to respond to that threat quickly. Now, the challenge with this approach is that with this level of visibility and analytics, this is quite resource intensive. So quite expensive and it's been, you know, out of, out of the reach, out of the means of a lot of users, you know, typically. Um, the situation is only exacerbated when we start introducing the complicated network landscape. So you have branches, you have roaming users, you have cloud applications, you have cloud storage, private public data centers. So there needs to be a solution that can give you this insight and the alerting capability in a precise and accurate way so that you're able to understand what's taking place on your organization and take the necessary action. Stealthwatch Cloud is Cisco's newest software as a service security offering that gives you that complete visibility of activity, both in the cloud, uh, both in the public and the private cloud. And we do this using something called dynamic entity modeling, which I'm gonna dig a bit deeper in in a very short while. Um, and essentially what, what this means is that we're able to detect threats automatically on the environment without any need for you be having to do any of the heavy lifting or uh, you know, deploying anything uh, to, to, to do it for you as other solutions might require you to. It's a software as a service solution that you manage purely from the cloud and reap the benefits from the cloud as well. I want to highlight here that Stealthwatch Cloud is a solution that addresses both the public and the private cloud. So if you're a consumer of Google Cloud Platform or AWS or Microsoft Azure, then we integrate with these platforms via our API and consume the flow records from them and then do the analytics in the cloud to report back to you as the end user. But also if you've got a private cloud or private data center, then we also have the ability to give you, you know, the, the ability to install a virtual sensor on-prem, which collects all the flow data and flow records and then feeds it back up to the cloud so that you can 
have a view of what's happening on the environment and take the necessary action based on that. It's a pay for what you use model. So as you begin to expand your, your consumption or as you expand your, your cloud environment, um, Selfish Cloud expands with it. It's very flexible. And we'll be show, sharing with you later, to the, later in a session um, how you can actually get this up and started in a trial so that you can see the benefits for yourself. Okay, so if we drill a bit deeper on how exactly Stealthwatch Cloud does what it does, and I guess the secret source behind it, Stealthwatch Cloud has a ability which we call dynamic entity modeling, which takes every single host or entity in the environment, collects a variety of different inputs for this particular host. So things like the IP metadata, authentication logs, system logs, uh, vulnerability scans, passive DNS as well. And over a 36-day baseline period, we perform a number of analysis mechanisms on this so that we draw some conclusions. So the first thing we understand is what is the role of that device? Is it a Android device? Is it a DNS server? Is it a database? Is it an iPhone? Is it a printer? Right? And then we put that device in a group. So looking at consistencies between devices. So if we have, for example, a database server, and we've put that in, in the database server groups, then this database server shouldn't really be accepting communications from external IPs. Whereas if we had the web server, then that external IP connection is acceptable, right? So beginning to look at you know, the consistencies between the connections, how do, how do these endpoints typically behave? So if, I, if I'm an organization that has, you know, a workforce that comes to my office at 9 a.m. in the morning and they log out at 5.30 p.m., then the typical behavior for my desktops on-prem could be that, you know, I see a, a, a peak in traffic at 9 a.m. and it dies down at midday, then it peaks back up until half five. So that's the baseline. But then if I start seeing some spikes at 2 a.m. and 3 a.m., then this is obviously not consistent with the previous behavior, and it's something which Stealthwatch Cloud will alert you on, as I'll come on to. If there's any communication that contradicts with your organization's policy, so if you've got some rules that say certain endpoints can't talk to other endpoints, or you can't, if you're, if you're a UK-based user and you don't have any business or customers in, let's say, South Asia or South America and you start seeing some communication requests coming from those parts of the world, then Stealthwatch Cloud also has the ability to flag that up and you know, give you an alert to say, you might want to take a look at this. And then ultimately, this is, this is all leading to the forecasting ability. So for every single entity, we draw these conclusions, we understand how it's behaving, what its normal behavior is like, and then we predict how it should behave going forward. And if that behavior starts to deviate from what we predicted it to be, then we're going to flag up and alert. And this is, I mean, the, the benefit here is that none of this is a manual process. Unlike a seam where, you know, from day one, day zero, from right from the start, you have to configure it and you have to fine tune it, you have to feed it, you have to interpret the results all manually. Stealthwatch Cloud gets to work right from the beginning and looks at your environment, does the analysis, draws the conclusion, so that your security analysts basically get the end product, which is an alert, so that they're able to focus their next steps and remediation on very closely. So when we were building the solution, it was quite important for us that the alerts that we produced were meaningful for the end user and not done in a way that was going to be noisy or give the user, you know, too many alerts so that it's like it's, it becomes too difficult to manage and, you know, doesn't really become relevant to them. And based on a typical 10,000 endpoint environment, you might expect maybe one to two alerts. So the alerts aren't noisy. The alerts give a lot of crucial insight. I'm going to show you some of the feedback that we've received from customers who've deployed the solution and, you know, their responses to the alerts themselves. But just to speak about some example alerts, so if there are excessive failed access attempts, maybe a root 
a, a brute force attack or if there's a multiple IP addresses targeting a single account, we're going to flag this up. If it's, there's a DDoS or amplification attack and you know some bad actors trying to take your network offline and sending a lot of traffic your way, that will raise an alert. Potential data exfiltration, database exfiltration. Um, if you have connections being requested from unusual places from around the world, that's going to be alerted on. And if your actual machines and your users are being used in a suspected botnet um, interaction, then this also will raise an alert. And these are just some, some examples. Um, but when you get an alert, it's not just that it tells you this is what's, what we've seen. The alert gives you the ability to go and dig deep and understand what's generating um, th this particular, uh, uh, what, what's, the, what, what's the steps that happened on the network that generated this alert um, so that you're able to do the root cause analysis and instead of getting to the root of the issue in, in typically what takes maybe days or weeks, you're able to get to it in a matter of minutes instead. So if we take a walkthrough of how an alert is ultimately generated, so you deploy the solution and it begins by analyzing your environment and looking at all the different entities on the network, you understand what the roles of those devices are. And in this example, we can see that there's a database server that's been identified. After 36 days, the baseline period is over. And Selfwatch Cloud understands that, okay, so in this example, we've got a database server, the data stays within the environment, and going forward, data is accessed from regular locations. Now, in yellow, we see that there's an observation that's been made, that there's a new external connection being observed, which is having a high throughput connection. This reaches a level where an alert is triggered in red because the amount of data that's been you know, uh, transacted and leaving the organ organization passes a certain threshold, and this is likely to be database exfiltration. So Selfwatch Cloud will alert you in this particular case. You're able to then go and take a look at the security settings that you've got on uh, your network and patch and remediate as necessary. As I mentioned, when we were building out the solution, it was important for us that Selfwatch Cloud provided meaningful alerts. So we provide a simple way for customers of the solution to give us deep feedback whenever we give them an alert and before they close it. So we asked the simple question, was the alert helpful? And 95% of the times that we've you know, received the responses have been that, yes, it's been helpful. And Selfwatch Cloud helped me in remediating something which I didn't even know existed. And we're quite proud of this fact because we don't want the solution to be just giving out alerts which don't really mean anything to the end user. We want them to be very accurate and to, to lead to direct next step of action for the end user. So I'll show the dashboard when I do the demo, but this is a screenshot of what it looks like. You can access the dashboard from anywhere, anytime, manage both your public cloud, your private cloud. And we're constantly rolling out a lot of features into Selfwatch Cloud. So Cisco is investing heavily in this, in this particular solution. Um, so once I show the dashboard, I'm going to show you some of the alerting capabilities and some of the different cool things that you can do as well. We integrate with a lot of systems, be it SIEM products. So if you do have a SIEM, then that's fine. You can take the output from Selfwatch Cloud, feed it to your SIEM, and basically provide your analysts with a way to see that, okay, these are places where you should be focusing your attention because there's been flagged up a, a, a potential problem on your network. So instead of your analysts trying to do everything manually and try to understand how networks are talking to each other or if anything, could be malicious, Stealthwatch Cloud does all the legwork for them and presents it on a plate. We have a lot of integration points with AWS. So you can see here S3, SQS, SNS, which is great for the Lambda function. So we take all this intelligence as well. And then when it comes to web platforms like Cisco, Spark, now WebEx Teams, or Slack, PagerDuty, then you can actually have Stealthwatch Cloud feeding the alerts to them as well so that you get these 
in um, your preferred platform. Even if you, if you still like to use email, then you can also integrate with your email platform. Okay, so I'll speak a bit now about the public cloud monitoring and what this looks like. So let's take the example of AWS. So in AWS, we have virtual private cloud flow logs, VPC flow logs. And these are basically records of conversations that are happening in AWS. So we take these in to Starforge Cloud. We also take in data from CloudTrail, which looks at resources like your um, RDS and Lambda and um, things like EC2. We take input from Inspector, which gives us vulnerability reports. We look at misconfigurations, um, Lambda, which is quite an interesting one because Lambda doesn't actually, it, it's, not, it's, serv it's serverless computing, so there is no server, but it's more around functions and logic which do particular actions. So we also take this Intel in, we send it to Stealthwatch Cloud and Stealthwatch Cloud does all the analysis. When it comes to Google Cloud Platform, very similar use case here. Um, you provide read access to your account Stealthwatch, to Stealthwatch Cloud, and we're able to take the flow logs from there as well. With Azure, it's slightly different. We are still waiting for Microsoft to open up their, their flow to be able to export it externally. So once this happens, it will be the same scenario as AWS and Google Cloud Platform. But today you can install virtual uh, machines in your Azure environment so that, we, so that these virtual machines take the flow and feed them to Apache Cloud um, to get the same end product. And we do have you know, quite a few customers that are doing it successfully. So those are the three uh, cloud platforms, AWS, Google Cloud Platform, and Microsoft Azure. Moving on to the private network monitoring. So as I mentioned earlier, when it comes to the private network, here you simply download a virtual appliance, which sits on either a, well, it's a Linux agent, which can sit on a virtual machine or a bare metal server. This collects flow from your switches, your firewalls. Um, if, if, your, if your particular infrastructure doesn't produce NetFlow, then we can sit at the span port and read this uh, traffic and then translate it into NetFlow. Um, we take information from Active Directory. If you're using Gigamon, if you've got Steam, we take all this Intel, send it to the virtual appliance, and then Stealthwatch Cloud does the computation up in the cloud itself. So over here, you see what this would look like on a typical network environment. So you can download as many virtual appliances as you need from the dashboard, install them on your servers, send your flow traffic to that virtual appliance. And that virtual appliance is passive. It does two things. The first it sent is, is that it sends the information to Starforge Cloud, so that Starforge Cloud does the analytics up in the cloud. And this is, done in an, this is done in an encrypted fashion as well, TLS 1.2. And the second is that it takes alerts from Starforge Cloud, and if you do have a SIM product, then it sends um, these alerts to it via syslog and SNMP. Okay. So what I'll do now is I'll pivot over to a demo to show you what Starforge Cloud actually looks like and how it works. So over here, you can see the dashboard. And on the top, you've got your alerts. Um, so you've got 75 open alerts there, which I'll come back to. Here you see your endpoint count. So how many endpoints or entities exist in your private or public cloud. At the bottom, you get a view of the traffic statistics. So how much traffic is coming in and out of your environment. So really, you know, high level information on your network over here to show you what's going on. But if I drill into the alerts themselves, which is where your security analysts would come to understand what's happening on your environment, here you see a number of different ones. So you've got things like remote access, you've got a new IP scanner, a new external connection, um, outbound traffic spike. And I can go into each one to get a better view of exactly what triggered this alert and what it's telling me. So this particular alert is saying that there's been access 
to a source on my network from a remote host in a blacklisted country. I can see when this alert was created, um, the IPs uh, of, the, um, of, the, of the particular uh, internal host over here, the IPs that it had. I can assign this alert to one of my security analysts to take you know, a closer look at it. And then scrolling down, we see observations that contributed to this particular alert. So I can click into these observations um, to, to get a closer look. And I see the IP address of my internal host is this. I, get, I can dig a bit deeper and look at the device profile to, if I want to go and remediate so I can understand what exactly I'm looking at over here. So the role that this particular uh, device has been given is that it's a network sensor. It's also a terminal server. The duration or the times that it's normally online or active, the IP addresses that it holds, etc. So a lot of different information that I can use here to, to quickly get a view of that particular host. And then going back, I can see here the IP address that requested to access this particular internal host. Now, this is of particular concern because this means that these IPs were able to get in beyond your virtual firewall and actually try to access your internal resources. And over here, you can see that the connected IP, it looks like it came from China. You're able to pivot into the IP address and do a number of different searches on it. So you can, if I go into Cisco Umbrella, um, you can actually spin up the Umbrella <laughs> Investigate console. If I log into it, I think I might have to just verify it. So 9327789. If I log into Investigate, which is part of our Umbrella solution, then I can get a view for this particular IP address, which ASN it lives on, and get some deeper analytics in terms of its security threat level and what constituted to um, it being flagged up. So I won't delve too deep into investigate, but it's a very powerful feature that enables you to get to the bottom of where the attack is coming from. This could be also done, you could also run a search using Talos. So if I pivot into this IP address from our Talos intelligence agency, I get a view of um, what we're seeing about it, things like the email reputation, the web reputation, spam level, where it's coming from in, in, uh, uh, globally. So a lot of different options over there. And then you can go away and begin to apply the necessary changes on your network so that these requests you know, don't become a business threat to your organization. If I go back to alerts to pick out another example. So internal connection blacklist hit. Two IP addresses that shouldn't communicate were observed exchanging data. Um, scrolling down, I can see that these were the two IP addresses. It looks like one is a Windows server and the other is a Raspberry Pi. So this is based on policy that you might have defined um, yourself, which says that you know I want this sort of segmentation in my network. And if, if there is that level of communication taking place, then you know that something hasn't been done correctly and you can go back and um, you know, amend as necessary. I just clicked in here to get a, a, a deeper visibility of you know, the ports that are being connected um, from both sides, the traffic coming to and from that particular um, or those two uh, devices. And there are, diff there are many different examples. So uh, let, let's look at this out outbound traffic spike. So a source starting sending a much larger amount of traffic to external destinations than before. Again, I can scroll down, get a view of what the source was. Um, I can see that it's sending, what's this, 2,213 uh, uh, megabytes, so about two, two gigabytes, and maybe it doesn't normally do that. So if I click in to that particular endpoint, I can look at a traffic chart. And once it loads, I can see that there is a spike in terms of, okay, normally, we see around you know a few megabytes, 100, 200 megabytes, and then we're going to a gigabytes and more. So it raises an alert. And again, these are customizable by you as the end user. So if I go over here to alerts, 
I can actually configure the alert priority. So these are all the different alerts which Stealthwatch Cloud will um, flag up. If I want a certain alert to have more or less priority, then I can simply go and change the setting over here, right? So to begin to fine tune the product to meet my needs and to meet what I deem as the biggest security threat to my on-prem and public cloud environment. I can also, if I show you guys the ability to go in here and define the local subnets that live on your environment, the virtual cloud subnets as well, the VPCs, etc. We spoke about integrations earlier. So here you have the ability to, um, you know, take that API keys and begin to integrate the different platforms that you have. AWS, Google Cloud Platform, um, Meraki, Umbrella, etc. Sensors. Um, so clicking in here gives you a view of where your different um, sensors are deployed. So we've got over here in some sensors in AWS, we've got some on the prem, etc. Um, and uh, we spoke about the ability to send the alerts via different webhooks. So here you've got the different options. You can send it via email, HipChat, Slack, WebEx Teams, etc. Right, all configurable from the dashboard. If I go back to the dashboard, we have a very cool feature here called AWS Visualizations. What this does is it actually maps out what your AWS environment looks like. So these are my different AWS accounts. If I zoom into one of them, I can see the different regions that comprise this particular account. So I've got US West 2. If I dig deeper, I can see the VPCs that fall under this particular region. And then I can see the subnets and all the different resources that live inside that subnet, right, and how they map to one another. And then once I begin to, you know, expand my network and I have multiple subnets and multiple different resources and I want to see how they actually connect and speak to each other, then this is a really efficient way to just come here, get that high level view and make sure that everything in the network is configured as it should be. Right, and this is from a networking standpoint. I can also do it from a security group standpoint to see, you know, very similar concept, drill, drill into the AWS account, drill into the region, drill into the VPC, and then start looking at things like the CIDR range, the security groups, et cetera, if they've been defined, right? So, so uh, a quick way to get that visibility in terms of what's happening on your AWS environment. And we are building out a platform to be able to, you know, have this level of visibility for other cloud providers. So Google Cloud and Azure. Um, we, we, we've got a dedicated team of engineers that are working, you know, um, a lot on the product to be able to expand that. So if you are consumers of those particular cloud environments, um, then I'd be very optimistic for some of the feature sets that are going to be coming out um, in the future. Okay, and to show you a bit more of some of the models that we have in the dashboard. So I can come to the endpoint report and click on a particular day to see what endpoints were active on my network to get a view of um, things like their attendance. So, um, you know, attendance is things like think about a heartbeat connection. How, how, how often is that particular endpoint or host active on a network? And then things like the number of connections that it made as well. So giving you that visibility to understand, you know, get that view of what's happening on the network. Um, and if there is anything which doesn't add up or shouldn't be the way that you intended it to be, then you can go back and make the necessary changes. Similar with traffic, we briefly looked at this earlier on the main dashboard. So a view of what's happening over on the network, um, the most active IPs on the network. Um, and again, if there is anything here which shouldn't be, and it's quite active, then that's something for the analyst to go and remediate as well. Okay, um, so when it comes to roles, Stealthwatch Cloud automatically gives your entities a role based on how they behave. So over here, we've got some of the, act, well, we've got the active roles in this particular demo environment. So we've got database servers, we've got mail servers, we've got terminal servers, et cetera. 
we've got some iOS devices. Um, so these will all be automatically picked up by the system. If there are any roles which you don't see here, or if you, if you maybe are an organization that have defined or created your own uh, products and you want to have, you know, assign them to certain roles, then you can also build your own roles in the dashboard as well. Okay, so that was essentially the, what I wanted to show you from the dashboard side. If I come back to uh, the presentation to uh, begin to summarize. So with Stealthwatch Cloud, the idea here is that we're trying to give you a tool that is going to make your security team more productive in its day-to-day -day job. So we're pinpointing every single host on the environment, giving you a detailed view of the inventory on your network, both in the public and private clouds, and then giving you the ability to understand if they're behaving in a different way than expected by providing you with alerts so that you're able to go and quickly remediate as necessary. And when it comes to things like compliance, you know, GDPR being a big one of them, as an end user, you need to be able to prove that you have the right resources and systems in place to A, protect your customer's data, but also B, to have a action plan in case something does happen on your environment. And Stealthwatch Cloud goes a long way in providing this um, peace of mind in the way that it operates and gives you that visibility. We do encourage you to go ahead and start a completely free 60-day trial. So put, put, put the product to the test, um, get in touch with Cisco. You can go online and try start the trial yourself. Um, as I said, the first 36 days is a baselining period. So you've, you will see some results from day zero for some alerts that don't require the full 36 days. But as um, you get Beyond that 36 day um, baseline period, you're going to start to see Selfwatch Cloud in its full power and you begin to see the results. And if you do need assistance in interpreting anything to maybe your uh, IT teams or if you want us to come and uh, do a similar presentation to um, your, the C level, etc., then do get in touch with Cisco, who would give you a security specialist to assist in this regard. If you are a user of AWS, or Google Cloud, then you're also able to go and start this trial directly from uh, either the AWS Marketplace or Google Cloud. Um, so feel free to go down that route. If you are using Azure or uh, want to use Stealthwatch Cloud for your private data center, um, then simply go to cisco.com as per the previous slide and begin the trial from there. Okay, so that's what I wanted to cover in our webinar. I hope it was beneficial and meaningful. Um, I hope uh, any questions that were posed were answered on the chat, but if any weren't, then we will be getting in touch after the webinar um, with follow-ups to make sure everything um, was answered. So thank you for your time and have a good day.